I'm very interested in the idea of art as a political activity, uh, mainly because representation has a lot of power. Like in this image, we usually draw Africa and Greenland like this, but Africa is actually 15 times larger than Greenland. And representation here changes how we think the world actually is. So as artists, I think we should be able to bring into being new modes of thought, new ways of understanding the world, and that is always a political activity. So I'm going to present uh, briefly a few of the artworks I've done over the, the years. Uh, the first one is an interactive installation I did in 2010, where I took a photo of a political activist that was tortured to death in 1974 in Uruguay, where I'm originally from. Um, and to explore the relationship that society has with political events, I created this piece where her photo was projected in a dark room and a lighter was also put there. And if you would light the lighter, then the projected image would start burning in an area corresponding to where the lighter is. A uh, while ago, I got, uh, like many other people, I got interested in electric muscle uh, stimulation. This is the first test I did here in New York. Uh, then I did this performance where I mapped all the dates of the deaths in one year of illegal immigrants trying to get to Europe across the Mediterranean to the corresponding time of a performance of Beethoven's Sonata Pathetique. I then attached electrodes to a pianist performing the piece, and he would receive an electric shock at the corresponding time with an intensity reflecting the number of victims. This would be the performance, turning this classic piece of European culture into a visualization of these people dying trying to get to Europe. I'm very interested in the idea of, of the other. Um, so um, you may remember there was a, in, in April 2015, no, in January 2015, there was a horrible terrorist attack in France against people working in the newspaper uh, Charlie Hebdo, where 12 people died. And understandably, they had a huge world reaction, the, the, the whole Josie uh, Charlie thing. However, I found very distrait, distressing that in April 2015, in Garissa, Kenya, there was an attack at Garissa University College where 148 people were killed and it was barely registered. So I created this internet browser extension that will change words like Kenya, Garissa, black students into France, or Lyon, and white students. And I offered it as an extension that helps you care. If you feel bad that because you don't really care about things happening in places like Garissa, then you can install this and it will make your looks, uh, the news look more important to you. It was not very successful. Uh, I did another one as a joke that turned every word into horror because I like Game of Thrones, and that was installed by thousands of people. So I don't know what it means, but perhaps it means something. Uh, in a more recent piece, and um, still working with the idea of how we represent the world, I created an installation where myself and a group of students from the Architectural Association from London interviewed uh, foreign helpers in Hong Kong, and then tried to represent how they see uh, the city of Hong Kong. Funny helpers are more than 340,000 in uh, Hong Kong, with low salaries, no legal possibility of ever obtaining residence, and often being subject of horrible abuse. Amnesty International has repeatedly denounced it as modern slavery. So the installation consisted of a screen that you could hold and move around, and it was tracked in real time when different videos and images were projected onto it, and there was also spatial audio that complemented the videos. The last two pieces I'm going to show uh, are collaborations with two friends, uh, Christian Clark and Tobias Klein. These are two performances. This first one, we created what I think is the first music concert that was attended in VR. Uh, we gave cardboards to the participants. Uh, they would install our, our app, and that app would react to the music. But it was also centrally controlled in a client-server architecture. So everybody was attending the performance together, but at the same time, everyone was alone in their own personal VR experience. For the second one, uh, in an electronic music festival uh, called Sonar, we rented an old barber seat, put a friend on it, and then used an EEG sensor to measure how his brain reacted to a 25 minutes long VR journey. And then we used that data, this is the second one, that data to create real-time music and visuals that was shown to the audience. Uh, we had three screens, one what, uh, showing what the person was seeing in VR, uh, one with the EEG data uh, in real time, and the central with the generated visuals, and of course everybody was listening to the, the generated music. So I was collaborating with the system, uh, co-creating the music and the visuals in real time, but at the same time I was uh, playing my friend's brain as an instrument by feeding uh, VR to it and capturing the reactions to, of his brain. And these last two pieces are not explicitly politic, but they explore the role that VR can play in society and in art, 
And again, I think that finding different ways of, of, of living, of thinking of the world is always a, a very political act. So thanks a lot. Cheers.